Hi, my name is James Mott. I'm also known as the Zen Chef. My love for food started when I was seven or eight years old, sitting at my parents' kitchen table, reading a family cookbook, every time they would bring it out to make something that we considered fancy. But I was also falling in love with healing people. So when it came time to go to college, I went for the medical degree. In my second senior year, after having a great dinner at a bistro that I had just been made sous chef of, my mom gives me a call and gives me her blessing to apply for culinary school. So in 2003, while applying for medical schools, I applied to the Culinary Institute of America where I was accepted and spent two of the best years of my life. After the CIA, I went on to work in private city clubs, I opened a Greg Norman golf course, spent a decade in healthcare food service, and the last six years in universities and colleges. As the, hus the, the father of a 16-year-old son, it's always been important to me to leave him with an earth that's sustained and healthy so that he can live out his days like I have. But in the last six years, working with so many other young people, I've taken that passion for my son and turned that into my purpose. So I've committed myself to changing my own personal diet to a plant-based diet, as well as my cooking style and culinary arts. Science and technology have now made it where you can have a vegan plate and a carnivore plate that look almost exactly the same, but they both respect the individual beliefs of each person. And today I'm gonna to show you a few of those things. So I'm excited to feature a couple products that I not only love, but I use almost every single day. I'm gonna do that by taking a couple classic dishes and turning them into vegan, delicious, friendly items that are also loved by everyone. The first is gonna be a velvety butternut squash bisque using the VioLife butter. Not only is VioLife vegan, but it's also allergen free, which is something I'm very passionate about as well. Then we're gonna take the classic chicken cacciatore and turn it on its head by using Nestle and Sweet Earth's Mindful Chicken. And then we're gonna finish with the big show doing a Bananas Foster Flambe using that same VioLife butter and a Halo Top dairy-free ice cream. All right, let's get into this. All right, so we'll start the day off. We're gonna make a classic butternut squash bisque. Super easy recipe, butternut squash, baby carrots, butter, cinnamon, allspice, little agave nectar. We're gonna finish it with this lovely reduced apple cider, about a gallon turned down to about a cup. So when you're working with butternut squash, you wanna peel the outside, but when you cut, they can be very slippery. You wanna make sure you create a flat edge. You want your pieces to be consistent with the sizes of your carrots. So you cut those down. This is gonna provide some luscious, earthy tones in the soup. All the carrots will give a nice sweet balance. So once you've prepped your vegetables, we add them to a pot of boiling water. We'll let those boil for about 10 to 12 minutes until they're fork tender. Now the thing that's gonna be different about this, normally you would make a bisque with butter and honey. We're actually using VioLife plant-based butter. This butter is made with coconut oil and faba bean proteins. So this is a lot easier for your body to break down. It's natural, it's more sustainable, and it's healthier for the earth. The agave nectar, unlike honey, it's not taken from any animal. Uh, but if you would like to use honey, it does give you a little bit more sweetness to it. Uh, and it, it has more natural antioxidants to it. So this BioLife butter looks exactly like real butter, tastes just like real butter, behaves just like real butter. This isn't your normal plant-based stuff. This isn't something that's been created in a lab. This isn't something that's been put together just for show. This is real butter. All right, so this will take about 10 to 12 minutes, depending on how big you cut your butternut squash. Uh, to know when it's ready, you'll just use a fork, test a piece of the squash. If it goes in and out fairly easily, it's ready to go. We're not quite there yet. So a little bit of my background. Um, you know, I've been a chef since I was quite young. And when the pandemic started, I started to look more at my health. And one of the things I saw was the effects of animal proteins on our bodies versus plant-based proteins. 
and I slowly started restricting the amount of animal protein I would consume each day until about eight months ago I went full vegetarian. In doing so, I've been able to have much quicker recoveries after workouts, my cholesterol is down, and I've lost quite a bit of weight. It's something that was a very personal decision to me. You know, it, it didn't start out just a thing to be trendy. It's something where I wanted to leave an earth for my son that was in better shape than when I got here. You know, that's something I've always grown up saying is you leave a place better than you found it. And so I wanted to do that, and, and this is one way I can do that, because if the rates we're going now, there's no way that we're gonna be able to sustain this earth uh, for, for generations to come. And having spent the last six years working in higher education with a lot of young people, the love of them has built in me this desire to move a passion for this earth for my son into a purpose for my life. So now that our vegetables are fork tender, we're gonna take these out of the boiling water. I did reserve some of the cooking liquid. We'll use that later to adjust the consistency if it's a little bit too thick. Now, if you were doing this in a large, uh, large batch, you would want to break this up. You'd want to do two or three smaller batches, seasoning each, and then bring them all back together at the end for one final season. But with this being such a small batch, I'm just gonna knock this all out at once. So we'll start pulsing it. It's a little thick, so we're gonna add some of that reserved cooking liquid. And now we're gonna add our spices in that Vitalife butter. So again, all this is kind of based on taste. For about a pound of carrots, two pounds of butter on that squash. I would use about a third of a pound of butter for the whole recipe. I'm gonna do some nice cinnamon. A little allspice. And then our agave nectar. Agave nectar is not quite as sweet as honey, so you may have to go with a little bit extra. But this is organic and it is completely plant-based and vegan. Now that we have this silky smooth mix, we'll serve it. And then you wanna dot it with a little bit of this reduced apple cider. And you see now, it's almost to a jelly consistency. It's been reduced so down so much and the pectins have gotten so thick. This provides a really tart, sweet, rich flavor to this soup that kind of balance, balances that rich thickness that you'll get out of the butternut squash.
If you wanted to make this a little bit richer, you could also add some toasted pumpkin seeds, maybe a little pumpkin seed oil at the end. It's a nice color contrast and a nice garnish. And that's our butternut squash bisque with a nice apple cider gloss. So for our grand finale, we're gonna do one of my favorite dishes to do. I learned this table side. I've done this hundreds of times. Bananas Foster Flambe. Now this is live fire. I'm gonna show you a way to impress your friends and family, but there are some safety tips you need to follow. If you do have long hair, I suggest pulling it back. If you have a beard but haven't worked in the industry for 20 years, I suggest wearing something to keep that up. You wanna make sure you have no curtains, no drapes, nothing that can catch on fire in the area. This is gonna be a big, powerful flame for five, five or six seconds. There's gonna be some sparks when we add the cinnamon. It's a great show, but definitely wanna be careful. So the first thing we need are bananas. You don't wanna cut your banana pieces too small. When you do, when they cook, they get kinda of mushy. A lot of people don't like that texture. So going with a bigger slice is a lot more appetizing. A little ripe is better as well. You don't want them to be too starchy. You don't want them to be too sweet. And then we're going to use the juice of half of an orange to finish making that sauce. So something I suggest whenever you're making a dish like this that's very quick and very action intense is to lay your ingredients out in the order in which you're going to use them. So I've got my butter, my brown sugar, my orange, bananas, the rum, and the cinnamon. This way I can quickly grab everything I need. So I'm doing about three tablespoons of the Violife butter, that same plant-based butter we used earlier. I'm gonna add about six tablespoons of brown sugar. Let that combine. Add the juice from half of your orange. And once it's nice and combined, we're gonna add all those bananas we cut up. Toss those in the sauce. Give them just a few seconds to cook. Then we're ready for the big show. So you wanna do is take your pan slightly off the heat, pull everything back. We're just trying to heat this back edge And when you do this, always pour from a jigger or a cup. If you pour straight from the bottle, you might have a little rocket go across your kitchen afterwards. Add your rum off the flame. Get a little fire. Finish with some cinnamon and just allow those bananas to cook down just a little bit more.
trying to stay with the vegan menu. You would normally serve this over ice cream, so we chose to use a luscious, rich, halo top, dairy-free ice cream to stay vegan. Have our serving dish. And top it with that rich caramel sauce we made with that Violife plant-based butter. And you are ready to serve. All right, for our chicken cacciatore, we're gonna be using this Sweet Earth Mindful Chicken. This is a product that I eat almost every single day. It's actually grown, not made in a lab. They take soy proteins, pea proteins, yeast concentrates, and make a product that truly does look just like real chicken. This is a great option in vegan cooking as it provides a significant amount of protein. It can often be lacked in some vegan and vegetarian diets. So this is a great way to get that protein that you need. So we're going to do a couple little uh, knife skill tricks uh, before we make this chicken cacciatore. To do our sliced onion, we're going to use one half of a sliced onion. You cut the ends off, come from the side, roll your onion down. Nice, thin, even slices. But a big part of sustaining the earth isn't just going with a plant-forward diet, it's reducing our waste. About 40% of all the food that we purchase in the U.S. gets thrown away. It doesn't get used for anything that we could use it for. This is often and includes trim pieces off things like peppers, where we take the ends off and don't use them. So today we're going to make sure we use all of this pepper to make sure we don't waste anything and we can sustain the earth. So what you want to do is cut the ends off, split the pepper in half, Simply cut out the vein. And then we're going to slice them. We want to keep these thin as well so they cook evenly with the onions. Then we want to make sure we use these end cuts. Again, try to cut them as evenly as you can to cook the same as the rest of your veggies. In this piece, you can see on the inside, an easy grid to remove the part that's usable and get rid of what is it. So the last thing we're going to work on is garlic. Personally, I do, not, I do not like biting into a big chunk of garlic that's in my food. You can mince it all day long, you're still always going to have chunks. So I'm going to show you a way to quickly paste some garlic so that you don't have that issue. So I'm going to use a heavier set knife, I'm going to crush my garlic some. And I'm gonna add a good helping of kosher salt. The kosher salt is gonna break up a lot of that cellulose and help make it a nice smooth paste. You can bring all the garlic together. On a slow motion, grind it across the board.
You can add more salt as needed, but remember any salt that you've added to this garlic, you do not want to add to your finished product. So having worked in higher ed for the last six years, I've gotten to see a lot of change in the way the culinary field is viewed. We can't just acknowledge the cultures that are in our area. We can't just think about the foods that we like to eat. Generation Z especially is extremely adventuresome in the way they eat. So if you're trying to connect with younger audiences, definitely look into other cuisines, learn about the cultures, and pick up some of those tricks and those flavors. You don't necessarily have to do some 30 recipe, 30 ingredient recipe, just to hit a new Chinese trend. But you can bring in a lot of those flavors and a lot of those techniques and appeal to a younger audience and try to bring in a sense of family and community as we're now connected more globally than we ever have before. So now we're going to prepare a sauce. Got a nice hot pan. We're going to do some olive oil. We're gonna start with our garlic. Let that saute just a little bit. Get some of that nice sweet flavor out of it. You know, when I make this dish at home, I'm a vegetarian. My wife and son uh, still do consume meat. So this is something that's pretty easy for us to cross-utilize. I can make this sauce one time. They can have their chicken thighs ready to go. When the sauce is ready, I'll break the sauce in half. I'll put some on my plant-based chicken and I'll do some on their chicken thighs. Theirs take a little bit longer to cook in the end, um, so you have to be aware of that. But overall, this is something that you can pretty easily adjust to fit your audience. So now that we've got a nice little color on the, the garlic, we're going to add our peppers and onions. We want to cook these until they're soft, but they will finish in the oven, so they don't have to be completely, completely cooked. Now I found with Switching to a plant-based diet, a lot of people have preconceived notions of me being some crazy outsider uh, that's all about the animals and trying to make sure everyone has to obey my lifestyle. But really a plant-forward cooking style isn't so much about pushing your beliefs on someone else as it is about taking care of the earth that we're given. And then we have limited resources, limited space, and we have to take care of our growing population. So to me, this is less about worrying about my food having a face, like some people would say, and more about the fact that when my son is, is older and he has a son of his own, that they'll have an earth that they can actually run and be happy with. So now we're going to add a little bit of tomato paste. You want to toast this a little bit. This is going to give you some of that deep, rich caramelization that's found in a lot of Italian foods. So you want to kind of make a well, get that tomato paste in the center of the pan, and let it cook. Mm. 
Alright. Now that our veggies are softening up a little bit, we're going to add some fresh cracked black pepper. Just a little bit more kosher salt. Some dried oregano. About a teaspoon and a half. And a heaping teaspoon of fresh chopped rosemary. Now you can see this beautiful caramelized tomato paste on the bottom of the pan. We don't want to lose any of that, so what we're going to do is take this red wine, we're going to deglaze our pan. We want to make sure all that fond gets mixed back into the, the dish, and all that delicious caramelization gets added to the sauce that we make in the end. So about a cup of red wine. I'm going to crank that back up. We're going to let this red wine cook down just a little bit before we move on. Alright, so now that our red wine is reduced down by about half, we're going to add about a cup and a half of veggie stock. A roasted vegetable veggie stock is just as flavorful as any chicken or beef stock, so you're not going to lose any flavor by switching over. Um, Nestle has some really great uh, roasted vegetable bases you can use. Uh, you can kind of adjust the, the uh, concentration you want. We're going to do one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. And then our 12 ounce portion of the Mindful Earth. Uh, mindful chicken. So we're going to mix all that back up, bring it back up to a light boil, and then we're going to cover this and pop it in the oven at 350 for about 12 minutes. All we're really looking for is for the, the chicken to heat up and the sauce to tighten just a little bit. And that'll go for about 12 to 15 minutes until it's hot. So now we're going to do the pasta. You want to make sure your water is salty like the ocean. Using angel hair, so it only take about six to seven minutes to cook. Now we've reduced down to a nice, thick, rich chicken cacciatore. We'll serve that with a little bit of the angel hair pasta.
And on top, that's just a little fresh parsley. And we are ready to serve. So I hope you enjoyed the show today. I hope you leave the program with a stronger belief in sustaining the earth yourself and have piqued your interest in a vegan lifestyle. So to wrap things up, today we made one of the most velvety soups you'll ever try, a butternut squash bisque featuring that vile life butter. We flipped a culinary Italian classic, chicken cacciatore, using Nestle's Mindful Chicken. And then we went for the wow factor using that same kitchen Swiss Army knife of the vile life butter to make a delicious bananas foster flambe. I hope you enjoy these. I look forward to working with you again. Next time we'll be making a juicy burger. Until then, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, always.